But sometimes it has less. So, so it depends. So you just hope, really, is all you're really doing. But if you have like three cups of decaffeinated coffee, then you probably have one, for sure, had at least one cup of regular coffee. Oh, interesting. I didn't do that. <laughs> I have three decaf. Okay. All right. You guys want to order food? I might order some french fries, but we will okay. see you in a minute. Um, just so you know, the happy hour is ending like a minute. So if you want to what, order What's anything, in the happy hour menu? Stuff like that. So there's some fries there. Fries, potato fries, chili fries, turkey sliders. What's a turkey slider? It's a turkey goat cheese slider. So it's a hamburger, mini hamburger. Mini, mini hamburger? Mini, mini turkey burger with goat cheese and arugula. Can you make it them with no regula on there? Or maybe sweet potato fries would be better. What do you think is better? Do you want do you want some turkey sliders? Mm -mm, it's just uh, one slider. Okay, well just give me some uh, just some French fries. So sweet potato fries or regular fries? Regular fries. Regular fries? Yeah. Okay. So welcome to the uh, late night podcast in Mel's. That was our fearless waitress. <laughs> Although that's probably sexist now to call her a waitress. Probably have to call her a, a waiter. Wait person. A wait person. Yeah. Wait person. Waitress. That's, that way it's all inclusive. That's what we call actresses in LA. Waitresses. Oh, uh uh. <laughs> it's an old joke. An old joke. You can ask her, well, when she comes back, we'll ask her how her acting career is going. I dare you. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> you do? You're wrong. I have a cough. That's horrible. Why? They, usually they're very happy if somebody asks them really? about their acting career. Okay, let's see what she says. Let's see what she says when she comes back. Okay. I'm gonna ask her how her acting career is going. Have you been on any interesting auditions lately? That's better. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> then it's almost like you guys have had a previous conversation, but she just doesn't call it. Right. It's not as, it's not as, uh, it's not, it's not as easily to interpret, easily to interpret it as being something derogatory, like, how's your acting career going? That's true, because that can kind of seem kind of condescending, like, oh, it's that not going seem. too well. You're working at Mills. You're working at <laughs> Mills. <laughs> like you're trying to clown her. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. That's true. Yeah, that wouldn't be nice. So, so what do you do? What is your name? Stephanie A. is comedy. Yeah. How do people react to this name? Um, they just kind of assume I do comedy. Uh huh. <laughs> and do you do comedy? I do. I saw you do comedy only once. Or I twice. Know. I saw you somewhere and then I put you on my show a long time ago. Yes. And you did a joke about uh, how you were in Germany. Oh, yeah. And they were eating sausages in like buns. No. Big old buns. And you were. You got me confused with somebody some else. Kind of, some kind of food. They were eating in Germany, and you said, I know poor people food when I see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I remember that yeah, joke. Yeah, that's and you true. know how many millions of jokes that I've heard? <laughs> and actually, so, so, hmm. have you been on any interesting auditions lately? I don't know. I, I could not be. It's possible. <laughs> it's a possibility that I could not be. Yeah. So, so have you been on any interesting auditions lately? Uh, no, I mean, it was your beautiful eyes that gave it away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I haven't really been trying lately. No. I don't see why I don't Yeah. Given up. No. So I mean, I still take class, and I still audition for people that I know, but I don't like submit to. There's so many. There's so many actors. It's like there's so many comedians. There's millions of them. Everywhere I go, I see. It's like you know the kid who says. Right. 
Even if there's no open mic here, ten comedians show up. <laughs> yeah, just for they're that. Just, like talking to each other. Like, right. You know, they're less they're there. That way, actually. It's it's like the uh, kid who says, "I see dead people." Mm-hmm. It's like I see funny people everywhere I go, or at least attempted people funny people. Now. Right. The attempted funny. Yeah. I should not have filled that so full, huh? Oh, it's all right. Oh, yeah. I'll live. All right. I'll stick some more in there after I put some artificial sweetener in there. <laughs> all right, I'm going to start my side work. All right. Poor thing. She hasn't acted in years. See, I told you. I told you. I think so. How about you? Have you been on any interesting auditions lately? Last week, I actually had a very interesting audition. It was for a gossip show, like a celebrity gossip show, kind of like TMZ. Uh huh. But like a bootleg version of TMZ, but on network television. Uh huh. And it was to be a correspondent for that show. I it think you could do tough. that. You know what? I didn't. You know, to be honest with you, I didn't want to book that audition. Why? I, I kind of, you know, I went ahead with it just to kind of like not let people down and stuff. But I really didn't want that job. Why didn't you want it? Because, you know, social commentary, especially about, you know, different actors and artists and people in the public eye. Um, I just don't feel right. Like I, I, I kind of looked at what they did last season, and I really don't feel comfortable like dragging people, quote unquote, dragging people and making fun of people and capping and clowning. And you know what I'm saying? I'm still not at that point in my career where I can just, you know, carte blanche just be talking about people. You know what I'm saying? There's that element. And then the other thing is, I don't want people dogging me like that. And uh-huh. so I just feel like we live in an age where anybody can just start trying to dig dirt up on you. Not that I have much, but people can start trying to dig dirt up on you and put you on blast or even lie, create stories and put it online just because they didn't like what you said about them, you know, on a public forum, on a public platform. So I felt very uncomfortable about that. Now, social commentary, I don't mind doing that, but like individual people's lives, like I just, it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, you know, people do that about me. They'll like take... A while ago, they had all these people that uh, took something that I wrote and uh, on my Facebook, and they took it out of context, and they started, all these people started. I think I remember that. All these people were attacking me, and I was, like, egging them on, and I was, oh, like, making a bad I was, I was, I was, they, were, they were trying to troll me, and I was trolling them back. And, you know, it was right when I was really busy with my business, and I didn't really have time to troll all these people as much as I wanted to. But a lot of people commented, <laughs> mentioned that it was very funny. And there was one person that actually started to get it and she wrote back, I think we're all the victim of some kind of weird performance art, <laughs> which is true because I am a performance artist that does comedy. And I said, Wait, oh, I said, oh, the jig is up. This was, this was when I was, I was disappointed there was this female oh, wait, comedian, yes. okay. and uh, I just said to her, hey, let's go have some coffee. Uh-huh. And it just became apparent to me the way she responded that she thought I was hitting on her, you know? Oh, wait a minute. And it's like impossible. It's like this, just this frustration that I have. It's impossible to, like, talk, not every female comic, but, you know, a lot of female comics, and talk to them just normally. Uh, just like have a normal conversation with them, and they think you're hitting on them. Oh, so this turned into like a Me Too moment? So, she, so all these people were making up that I was this booker, and I wasn't going to book her on my shows anymore if, if because she she didn't like me or something. That I really did like her, that I really was attracted to her, and that I was just hurt over her not wanting me back or something like that. I think I remember something about this sounds vaguely familiar. And so all these people were attacking me. Yeah. And it was really it was really hilarious. And a lot of people were telling me, Oh, keep it going, keep it going And uh I was like, nah, I don't want to ranch or anything for those? I don't do you? Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
And I really wanted to go and go to the like the MGTOW Reddit or something. MGTOW is like this anti-feminist online men's <laughs> movement. And like tell them, come over and join my Facebook and argue with these feminists that are attacking me. Why but are I was, mad I was so busy. I was so busy because it was right in the middle of the Christmas rush, and I do mail order. <laughs> and I was like, man, I just do not have time to do this. So eventually, I just after I was done trolling them to the extent it, it wasn't funny anymore. Uh, Thank you. I I just block them all. It's like you it's block just, them all. On yeah, Facebook? yeah. It's like this. These this. It's just like these people are just mentally ill people That's true. that no one is paying attention to them, and they get a hold of some catchphrases like, you know, from the social just social justice warrior catchphrases, and then they suddenly they're important and people are listening to them, and they can imagine that they're about something, you know, and suddenly people are 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 writing them. And there's these people that are just mentally ill on there. You're it's saying the most mentally, mentally ill, Ill people. people on like w media. women are afraid of men and blah 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 blah. People just, just be on and too on far. and on. They be taking things too far on social media. Like I see, see the most bizarre posts. I see the most bizarre commentary responses to things. I just see these people get heated and just very passionate and going back and forth over tomatoes and tomatoes. Like I'm right. like, really? What is the problem like I I when I was younger I used to kind of chime in here or there when I would see something that really pissed me off but now <coughs> if you, you're wasting your breath or wasting your keyboard uh, yeah. function functionality trying to respond to because people most people if you're bold enough to post publicly your mind is made up you feel strongly about it it doesn't matter what anybody says in response, how wrong you are, how right someone else may be, or vice versa, you're not changing your stance. So what's the point? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They don't change their stance. And then it just kind of like, you see it kind of like devolve after like maybe two or three rounds of going back, it devolves into, well, your mama, well, your mama, bitch, well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. it turns into like... It's, you know, it's just, just nuts. All these people yeah, insulting me, insulting. and there are all these these feminist manginas on there coming on there. Manginas, it's like, it's manginas, and they're What's all like, mangina? that's like a, a male feminist. It's a mangina. Well, you know, all men do start <laughs> off as females in the yes, womb. Yes, we all do start as females in the womb, and then we are testicles. You already have Our your ovaries man, descend man and become testicles, and we have, have nipples. Yeah. We have nipples. Why do we have nipples on there? And then uh, uh, it's because we all start out as female. And That's then right. the, the clitoris grows into a penis, yeah. and the ovaries descend and become testicles. Yes. And then, and then some people uh, think, that they're, think that they're female. Like oh, I have a brother who's transitioning. Right? Transsexual, right? Transsexual. He, 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 not correct. It's anymore. called gender dysphagia, I believe. My brother See, they has just it. They're making shit up now. Right, they're just making crap up. What is it, gender what? Yeah, gender dysphagia. It's it's a incurable uh, mental illness where you believe yeah, you were born the wrong gender, and that's what uh, uh, what's his face has. Um, Caitlin. Caitlin, and my brother as well. Wow. And he said the only cure for it is suicide. He's been oh. in treatment for it his whole life. But anyway, I wrote about this this woman, and all these people were writing. You know, there was these women that were so angry. There was one comedian who said, "We'll make sure you never get a job in our town." Because oh, I'm yeah. like, I'm just saying, you know, like she runs the comedy world. There's, there's all kinds of people in the comedy world that really think they run the comedy world. They're I missed just all really this excitement on your Ill Facebook. People. And this uh, uh, just just ridiculous, just junk uh, about about it, and it was extremely funny. And I was enjoying it. I was laughing till I was crying at these people, and I was, they were all just blowing up at me, saying, "There's no such thing as a patriarchy." It's like I don't believe, in, and, you know. And then they're just like, "Oh my God, I can't believe you said that!" Like my, you know, it says on the internet that there is a 
there is a patriarchy and yeah. my and my so there must be and my you know old hippie uh, teacher at my community college told me that there is in my gender studies class told me that there must be but you know I don't think there's a patriarchy I think we live in a very chaotic very free society and people are pretty much at this point allowed to be pretty much whatever they want but anyway they're just going on and on and on and on about all this stuff and so I really wanted to get uh, I really wanted to get the MGTOW movement involved with them that would have been really funny and turn it more into an international incident but eventually I'm just like I have to get with making my rent <laughs> like get these orders out and I can't be on my phone all day trolling these Looney Tunes and uh, that they are and I'm just going man you know I'm just talking about it. I'm just saying you know why and I'm just you know I'm trolling them and saying well why haven't talked to a female comic no female comic has ever helped me get up anywhere anyway I've wasted my time ever talking to a female comic you know and they just blow up at me and then I'd have a bunch of hundred other people getting mad at me and there were people that weren't my friends they were evidently forwarding my responses to some angry uh, uh, website or group oh and then the people were coming and coming to my site and attacking me and calling me names and stuff like that calling and names? yes oh all kinds of horrible names but you know what happens to me all the time on Twitter I'll get people on there and they'll be like you know attacking me you're not a real comedian you're not funny blah 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 and attacking me on Twitter and uh, attacking me on this and attacking me that I just block them it's just part of being as far as I'm concerned it's just part of being on Facebook part of being on Twitter, part of being online. Well, not necessarily, because I, I can have these experiences on Facebook. You don't? No. You're done. You're pro I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a provocateur, and I also talk That's a lot about issues. I talk a lot about issues. I talk a lot about myself. And, you know, I also do comedy that offends a lot of people, and it, it kind of weirds me out, too. And I was writing about something that, you know, it would feel kind of sad to me. But like I can't, you know, go and she was a there was a person whose comedy I liked, and I would put her on my show because I thought she was really funny, and she didn't really have any routine. She's just such a strange person <laughs> that that it was just funny no matter what she talked about, and so I thought that was good, and I was not attracted to her, you know, I just was not, and uh, I've had too many. I've tried. I've tried a lot with women that I'm not attracted to, to like fall in love with them. And it's true. I have fallen in love with people and think they're attractive. And now oh, I look at them and go, them charity, and, and yeah, and I would go, and then now I look at them and go, how did I think she was the most beautiful girl in the world? You know, because I did. There was this one girl, and I fell in love with her, and I just thought she was the most beautiful girl in the world. That's happened to me in my life. You know, you have feelings for someone, you think they're really attractive, and then later on. Then later on, you're like, how could I like that person? I don't understand. I don't think they're attractive at all. That's ever happened to you? Not, not, not really. No. Like, like you really thought some guy was really, really good looking, but you liked him, but then later on, you don't After like him you get anymore. To know him. And then you think, oh, they're yes. not, they're not good looking at all. Not That's so happened much to me. They're not good looking, but just. The shine has worn off, and now I see who they really are. Mm -hmm. More that, mm -hmm. more so than, oh, you're not even cute at all. No, if I think you're cute, you're cute. So I was just kind of sad. It was like, you know, this girl, I guess the whole time that I've known her and I talked to her and thought I was friends with her, she thought that I wanted her and was having feelings for her and was pursuing her romantically and I was just like she's an now interesting like little emotional. sister you know she's just like my little sister you know not anyone that I think I want to you know be with and if I was she would know it you know because I'm very aggressive forward okay. and honest about my feelings if I have feelings for them if That's I start forthright. to have, yeah if I have feelings for somebody I'm gonna tell them and I'm not going to be around them because, like, if you say you have feelings for someone and they say, well, we can be friends, that's like inviting you to be emotionally tortured. That's like you don't get what you want, they get what they want, and you develop more feelings for them from spending time with them 
and that, that they're not going to return. So that's no, just like no, torturing that, that's yourself. That's not always the case. It's not that always the case, but it is the case, it is the case with I've me. I've done that, and, you know, I eventually, I eventually, uh, what's the word, came around and saw that person as a potential uh, romantic partner. So sometimes you can wear, you can wear somebody down. <laughs> you can wear them down, especially a man. They can wear you down. If they just constantly there for you, you know what I'm saying, when you having financial issues. Oh my God, I just ran out of gas. Boom, I'm there. Oh, I can't pay my light bill. Boom, I'm there. You know, stuff like that. Women, you know, we need things. Mm -hmm. So somebody's constantly got your back. You know, they're down to kick it with you, go to the movies, eat stuff like that. They last when all the other, like, fuck boys, like, fall by the wayside and that person is still there. You might just go ahead and, and you know, Give them My, some and, no, I'm telling but you, are you really, from experience, I, I'm with someone like that now. Uh huh. Who he was literally my platonic friend for ten years. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't have ten years to work on girl. For me, well, sometimes not. That's my situation, <laughs> but sometimes it can happen much sooner yeah. and much quicker. You no, know, I've had it happen where I the change, but I have the idea that this is going to change. And, you know, I don't really hang around girls. If I'm really attracted to them or if I have feelings to them, I tell them. And if they're not into it, yeah, I get out of there. Because I don't want to be emotionally harmed. I had... Uh, <laughs> emotionally harmed. I had this girl, and I did. I was I had feelings for her. And so I was around her. And I went on this one day with her, and then she kind of brushed me off. and But I still had feelings for her. And then I started to try to be friends with her. And I did, and I was hanging around her, and I just fell in love with her. And I was just, just in tears for months. Couldn't get out of oh bed. It was goodness. terrible. So, you know, I don't do that. But it's it, although that time was when I had just got out of the hospital and I had post-traumatic stress syndrome. So I was there was really something wrong with me at that time. Yeah. Because I had, uh, like, the same thing you get from uh, being at war. Because I had a, a not horrible, painful death in the hospital, and then I had a horrible operation in which I died, and then I was in critical care, like almost dead for a long time, and then I had a horrible, painful recovery, and uh, I came out of it with post-traumatic stress syndrome. And these doctors didn't even tell me anything about that, but I didn't know it at the time. I was very vulnerable, and this person was really an emotional predator, like an emotional came in on predator. Me. Yeah, she had uh, she had NPD. I didn't know what that was what at the, the time. What the hell is that? A narcissistic personality disorder. Narcissistic personality disorder. Disorder. And I have to evidently I have to watch out for those people because I am a very empathic person. I'm what's called an empath. I feel what other people feel. Oh, I'm like that too. Despite my offensive comedy that I do, where I enjoy offending people sometimes. Oh, the, so you uh, can dish it, but you can't take it. Yeah, I can dish it. No, I just feel what other people feel a lot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it doesn't keep me from having a sense of humor or uh, a, a sense of humor about uh, things that are, you know, I guess, I guess about people that don't really feel anything, you know, and when I do, because I think that's funny. And uh, uh, I don't really understand it. Like, I know someone who's a sociopath who does comedy. And a sociopath is a, so, is a person that doesn't really have an internal emotional self. And their comedy is all about people that do have emotions and how he thinks it's funny. My comedy is, is about uh, the pretense of it is a person that really doesn't care and doesn't have concern for others. And I find that to be funny. But I really do. But it's still just my sense of humor at least the pretense in my joke to often say that I don't. But, or just at least to try to have a realistic point of view. But anyway, I'm like candy to narcissists, so I have to watch out. And a lot of people in the entertainment industry who are wannabes in the entertainment industry have NPD, and I've learned to uh, realize who they are now. Uh -huh. And they come after me. And they do what's called love bombing. At first, they love what is bomb it you. I'm learning all types of new Nar Narcissistic terms personality today. disorder, or NPD for short. Uh -huh. And what happens is they're injured when they're little. 
okay. in some way. They're touched inappropriately by an alcoholic father or something like that. And oh. then they form the hard shell of the narcissist around the injured oh. child inside. And what happens is they kind of feed off of hurting other people emotionally. They have a very low sense of empathy, and they live off of what's called narcissistic supply. So, and they usually follow a pattern in what they do. They love bomb a person, be their What's ideal love lover. Bomb? Love bomb a person comes into your life and be your, they become your ideal lover. Okay? Then, then they become, uh, then what they do is they will, it's just the worst possible time, they'll discard you. And then, unbeknownst to you, if they're in your social circle, they'll start a slander campaign against you. Oh, yeah. And then what they will do is they'll, what's called hoovering. They'll hoover, hoover you back in. It's like a vacuum cleaner. They'll hoover you back into the relationship. But it's, but it's just to toy with you more emotionally. They get their claws in you again and tear you apart emotionally. Then they get off on that. There's a whole online community. Like, if you go to YouTube, and you type in how to tell if you're dealing with a narcissist, recovering from narcissistic abuse, stuff like that. If you go and you uh, uh, look, okay, on YouTube, you'll find a bunch of people, psychiatrists, counselors, talking to people about how to deal with a narcissist and how the narcissist gets formed. So there's a lot of them out there, and they're causing a lot of damage, and people are just starting to realize that they've been attacked by these people and I've been attacked by these people and now I can I'm going to be able to tell now I know enough to be able to tell if they are coming in to get me if the person that I'm dealing with is a narcissist like what are three things that you would change about yourself three things that would change about myself Maybe I would be more aggressive. Uh huh. More aggressive. Um, I'd like to be more disciplined. Uh huh. And I would like to be. Um, oh shit. That's Not as frightened so easily by loud noises? That's the third one. <laughs> well, you know, see, a narcissist uh, would just get mad at that question because you're implying that they're not perfect. A narcissist thinks they're perfect and they cannot self-reflect. You had a moment there where you were looking inside of yourself. Yeah. Looking at yourself. Narcissists cannot do that. Oh, that sounds like my mom. And they do not and cannot look into themselves and think that they are not uh, perfect. And I remember having, before I knew what a narcissist was, I would have this conversation with her, this long conversation about how she thinks she's perfect. And basically, she did. And so if you think your mom, that might be your mom, you should, look, you should go look up online how to tell if you're dealing with a narcissist. I don't ready? even need to look that up. Really? I'm pretty convinced. Does she gaslight you? Hell yeah. So she says, she promises things to you and then said, I didn't say that? Yes. Okay, well maybe you were raised by a narcissist. You should go online and look about how to recover from being raised by a oh, narcissist. She may not even say I didn't say that. She'll just say, well, I changed my mind. Changed my mind? Mm -hmm. Well, you may want to look into it. It's something, it's something you look into. It's something you to watch out for. And there is uh, recovery and things you can do to help, especially if you're an adult child of an alcoholic, which I am. Mm. They have a lot of problems with narcissists coming in to attack them, and I have. But the thing is, you know, like this one narcissist that love bombed me. I'll show you a picture of her. She's absolutely perfect for me, if I can find a picture of her. And love bombing is what again? They come in and they are your ideal. They become your ideal lover. That's uh, that's their thing. They are your uh, 
There she is, right there. You may even, you may even, you may even know her. So I'll cover her face. She's, she's, she's very pretty. Gorgeous, gorgeous now. girl. Yes, thank you. And she was an incredibly gorgeous girl, and she was so perfect for me because she was a comedian. She was my age. She was not my age. A little bit older, late 30s. Perfect age <laughs> for me, okay? And hadn't lost uh, and was still very beautiful. And uh, just perfect. But, you know, I had no idea what a narcissist was at that point. So I was just being, I was being, she did the whole thing. Later on, I realized, wow, what is this, uh, you know, the whole entire pattern of the, event, the discard, what's called the discard at the worst possible time. They discard you, they love bomb you, then discard you. And then they, she hoovered me back into the relationship. She brought me back in, but it was just a toy with me emotionally. And, uh, you know, it was it was bad. And then after that, and then I died in the hospital, and she wouldn't come see me in the hospital. But she kept telling me she would. She was going to be there. And just, just that kind of cruelty that uh, is typical of narcissists that get off on harming other people emotionally. And then they're just, they're very sweet. But they never apologize. They never say they're sorry. And it's always your fault. No matter what happened, because of something you did. You know? So. That sounds like an ex I had, too. Really? So I've, I've identified two so far. Really? We'll look into it. But anyway, so that's why I would never be. That's one of the reasons I would never be friends. If I was really attracted to this girl, I wouldn't be friends with her. I wouldn't be saying, oh, let's go out and stuff like that. I would just be like, meh, I shouldn't be hanging around this person because I might fall for them much worse. You know? I don't need to be doing that. If I feel myself having feelings for someone, I'm going to tell them that if they're not into it, I'm going to get out of there. Because I need to protect myself emotionally you know what I mean and uh, sure maybe I can be friends with someone for 10 years but I don't have to I don't have 10 years to be friends with someone you know they either want a baby or they don't you know what I mean that's that but uh, anyway pretty much a straight-up post about about that and I'm like you know I'm not serious you know am I serious am I trolling people Am I saying, oh, you know, why ever talk to a few more comics again? You know, and, uh, you know, the male comics, like when I was doing a show, I would put the male comics on a show and they immediately would put me on their show. Not all of them, but most of them. And that's just the more professional they were, how? Put me on their show. I put them on their show, how? They put, me, they put them on my show, they put me on their show. And that was just something that the guys understood. And that's something that the guys do. Female comics, not so much. But I've met some wonderful female comics. If I didn't talk to them, uh, I I would, uh, you know, I would have missed out on those people. But you know, it's still, I still more and more am cautious with everyone, male and female, in the comedy world. You know, because there's really just a lot of very needy people, a lot of very desperate people very codependent people, and uh, you just have to be very cautious, you know, and also have to watch out when you have something, a lot of people will come in trying to take advantage, you ah, know? Like how so? Just, you know, pretending to be my friend and be interested. When I had a show, they would pretend to be my friend and be interested in me. Girls who wanted to be on the show would come up and flirt with me touch my shoulder, rub against me, be very flirtatious. And then I'd put them on the show, and then they wouldn't be interested in talking to me at all. Just get away from me. And it's just sad. But, you know, that's the way it is. That's the way it is in, uh, in uh, Hollywood. You know, but the whole time I was doing my shows, I had a girlfriend. And she was wonderful. And, uh, 
but it was just it was just a sad it's just kind of sad to see that you know it's like you don't have to flirt with me to get on my show you know just make sure your comedy doesn't suck you know right do something like i did see you perform somewhere that's why i remembered you and put you up there and most of the people because i go to lots of open mics and i see people and if i at least think there's something there and they're able to go up and perform and do something well but I'm going to put them up or just give somebody a chance, you know, and let them go. And there are people that also I put people on my show who are just very different from other people. People would say, okay, that person isn't that good. You shouldn't put them on your show. I'm like, yeah, but they're very different from everyone else on the show. And that will make them seem better because they're so different. I would also just love to put up just random weirdos, like some poets or just strange people that play the ukulele and sing about food. Or just, you know, just any kind of, just a weird person that would go up and do strange things. So would put them up, performance artists, and put them up with comedians, you know, that had been on Leno three times, you know, and just let people rise to the occasion or fail horribly, you know, and people would. There are comedians that I know that are better, that used to be better, and are getting worse. How does that happen? How I don't does know. that happen? I don't know. So, you, so do you do stand up anymore, or are you just doing improv? Both. Both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where are you doing stand up and improv? Um. Well, just had a show today at UCB. Um. And then stand up. I don't know my next mm -hmm. performance just yet. But I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. I just take gigs just everywhere. I just go, just whatever gig I can find, you know. Um, I just try to figure out how many get there. I have no idea how many get there. I'm in Ventura next on Wednesday. I have no idea how many to get there. If I have to take a bus, I will. You know, I'm taking shows in San Diego and can't find anyone to drive me. So I'll take the train down, which, which stops running at about 8 o'clock. And then it's a nice train ride down there, too. And then uh, uh, stopped running at 8 o'clock. And then, so I had nowhere to go. There was no way to get back because the train stopped running. So I had to, like, go to the Denny's and, like, wait till the morning, 6 a.m., when the, when the uh, Greyhound bus was coming back. I'm like, I don't care. I can sleep on the street. No one's going to do anything to me. What is oh anyone going to do? I'm a, I'm a big, ugly, mean man. No one's going to do anything to me, you know? Just uh, no one's going to bother me. And if they do, then they're in for a lot of trouble. You know, I can take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not afraid of anyone. And But, you know, who's going to bother me? I don't have any money to steal. What are they going to do, you know? So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I need to get a car again. But I've been putting it off because Uber is cheaper than a car. That's what a lot of people say. It just is. If you're running around, but you need to go outside of L.A., then it's a problem. But if you're in L.A., you know, I was, I once, I, because my car, I crashed my car, and I was going to get another one, and I was, I was sitting down thinking, how much does this really cost to have a car in Los Angeles? What does it cost me? So I sat down, and I started writing down the cost of the car, the insurance, the gas, the repairs, cleaning the car, parking the car, parking tickets, which are inevitable, uh, miscellaneous costs for the car, and it costs like $30, $40 a day to own even a cheap car in Los Angeles. So it's like, wow, if my Uber bill is under $30, I'm saving money. And my Uber bill is like $3 uh -huh. or $4 a day. You know, my Uber bill today was $3.08. And then if you complain a lot on Uber, a lot of times they will refund your a lot of your fare, to part of your fare. <laughs> so I always complain, which they like anyway because it makes their drivers better. Oh wow! So what do you want to do? What do you want to be as an actress? What do you? What kind of roles do you want? Dramatic roles, comedy roles? Comedy roles, sketch comedy, or just. Um, I don't know. A comedic, a comedic role. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. What kind of sitcom? Or even like children's television, like Nickelodeon, Disney Channel, mm-hmm. ABC Family. Uh huh. Um, Star Trek. That too. I'm <laughs> open to it all. <laughs> but I have a special soft spot for comedic roles. Right. So you want to be a comedy actor. Yeah, I'd say so. Saturday Night Live, sketch show. Definitely, yes. Sketch show, any of that. Uh Uh-huh. I would like that. But, you know, I'm not really an improv guy. I want to do stand-up. I would do acting, and I have done it here and there. Um, I would do acting just to open up doors for Mm -hmm. me and comedy, you know. So I really should start to... You know, apply to stuff, and, but it's just there's so much I have to do. It's hard enough to run, get up every night, doing comedy, mm-hmm. to do a podcast, get acting roles, and then have a job too, and like try to work on my business and make the rent. Yeah. You know, and pay off my credit card and all that stuff. And I gotta save money. If I gotta pay off my credit card, then I gotta save money to buy a car. Or I gotta take my credit card once I pay it off. Mm-hmm. And then go buy a car and then run my credit card bill up again. You getting tired? I've had a long day, so yeah. a little bit. Getting a little bit tired. Let mm-hmm. me see. Forty-two. So, what news stories have you noticed lately? Of Anything course, interesting? the big one. You know, Donald Trump and his commentary. Donald Trump. Yeah. Um, the false alarm in Hawaii. False alarm in Hawaii. What else? Uh, the mudslides in California. They have mudslides every year. And, you know, whatever the president says, they'll have one side of the press, like, going crazy. Like, everything Obama said, the people at Fox News would go nuts on. And now everything that uh, Trump says... Uh, They'll pick one thing out of it, and ABC and CBS and CNN will go batshit over whatever it is he said, and, or they think he said, or he may have said. Because it's just like one way or the other. And I look at both. I look at all the news anyway all the time. So I'm always going, yeah, oh, okay. I remember when Bush, Bush was president, all day long they would just attack George Bush. He was president for eight years, and this guy will probably be president for eight years, too. And the press will just continue to just get madder and madder and madder. It's like the press gets madder and madder and madder every day. There's some new thing that he said, and I'll just attack him for it. Like, I'm a libertarian. I voted for Gary Johnson. So I'm really on either side. But I'm glad that they switched power. Having the Democrats in power for too long isn't good. Having the Republicans in power for too long is good either. Switching back and forth hopefully will mean they have less power. That's what I think. Okay, that's <laughs> one way to look at things. I disagree with both parties on, on a lot of stuff, on most stuff. But as a libertarian, I'm used to people being disagreeing with me politically. And people on the right will attack me. People on the left will attack me. People on the right will think I'm an extreme leftist, and the people on the right will think uh, or the people on the left will think I'm an extreme right winger or something. So you like to politically fake people out? No, I just I'm just not really a Republican or Democrat. I'm a Libertarian. Libertarians just want uh, uh, less less government influence in people's lives. We're against the coerciveness of government, whether it's stuff that was come up with the left wing or the right wing. But thank you for coming out and being on the podcast today. You're falling asleep, so I'm going to say goodbye. Where can people find you? Do you have a website? Do you have a Twitter? Uh, I'm actually working on my website right now, and I'm so excited about that. Um, it is in the works, but um, as of right now, the domain name is 
Uh, I am stephanieA.com. But you can also find me on Twitter. Um, at Steph is comedy. And you can find me on Instagram. Stephanie is comedy. All right. You do that. Thanks for coming out, you guys. You guys. Why did I call you you guys? Thanks for coming <laughs> out. You guys, you listeners. Uh -huh. And thanks for coming out, Stephanie. <laughs>